everyone and welcome to Hub Chat Health. I'm Renee, your host, and today we're going to be talking about supercharging our immune system. The lovely and knowledgeable Kim Sterling is our special guest today. Welcome to Hub Chat Health, Kim. It's great to have you here. Hi, thanks Renee. It's wonderful to have this opportunity to chat to everybody. Thank you. Great. Kim, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm a naturopath, a medical herbalist and a nutritionist and have been a nutritionist. I was a nutritionist for about 25, 28 years before I actually went back and decided to become an adult student and studied naturopathy. So it's been a wonderful journey. And, you know, my belief is that we, you know, we have these amazing bodies that were created for us mm. and um, the food and um, activities, the trees, all of those things that were created for us as well for our health and well-being. And we need to look after ourselves, but we also can actually really help our bodies to heal themselves too if we choose the right things to do. Yay. Oh, look, I'm excited about this discussion today. And I know that our viewers are going to be informed they're going to be blessed by this, this discussion so remember if you have any questions keep sending them in to hubchatquestions at gmail.com and thanks for sending these questions in and your comments and your prayers and your messages of support we really appreciate it before we begin today let's start with a prayer our father god in heaven we want to ask that you just uh, guide our discussions today as we talk about ways of boosting our immunity by using what you have given to us, nature. We ask this now in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so immunity. Mm -hmm. Let's have a chat about it. Right. So, so I think, you know, the biggest challenge, as you would know as well, Renee, is, you know, facing us today in regards to our health is we actually have to look after ourselves. You know, God gave us an amazing body, but he also asked us to take care of ourselves as well. And, um, you know, one of the things I managed to find in some research when I was looking for doing this today was that um, in an overseas study, 63% of the hospitalizations from COVID could have been prevented if they had been eating a healthier diet. That's amazing, isn't it? It is. 63%. So, yeah, pretty that's big. A, that's, a, that's a very high percentage, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's without all of the other lifestyle things that we can do that can really help our immune system. So our immune system is a pretty complex network um, that works to keep us really healthy. It's a barrier between our body and harmful intruders that make us sick. And, you know, we actually have two types of immune systems. We've got one, the innate immune system. That's the one we were born with. And that's some things like, you know, our nose, um, the nasal hairs in our nose, um, the moisture that's in there. When we cough, when we get a tickle, when something goes down our throat, you know, it's a system that is a, it automatically happens. We don't have to do anything with it. The adaptive immune system is one that develops over time. And this is the one we're needing for these times that we're living in. Um, you know, it, the pathogen gets introduced to our body and the immune system is amazing and can remember it. And um, that antigen then, when it comes in the next time, the body automatically remembers it and um, destroys it, gets rid of it, takes it out of our body. It's a fantastic system, isn't it? Mm, it, it is indeed. Now, you talked about lifestyle factors just a moment ago. What mm. sort of lifestyle factors can actually affect our immune system? Well, you know, lack of sleep, number one. Um, sleep is such an important time. And um, also, of course, the not eating well, which we've already talked about. Um, stress. One of the biggest factors is stress um, because it changes the whole way that our system works and changes the um, way that our hormones all work together. Um, and so stress is one of the is probably one of the biggest apart from the eating I think also exercise getting outside so we're going to talk about those in a moment but you know we've got to think about some of those lifestyle factors and um, you know if we look at um, you know the Bible tells us about how we should look after ourselves you know we have the eight health um, remedies that we can use to help us on our health journey and all of these factors can make such a difference to our lives. 
And they're such great principles, aren't they? Those, that, that mm -hmm. new start principle, you know, if we applied yeah. those nutrition, exercise, water, um, sleep, what is it? Uh, no, not S, what's it? Oh, sunshine, temperance, yeah. air, rest, and trust in God. If we had applied those yeah. principles, we would be super healthy beings. It's just Absolutely. challenging to apply it. Well, I think in the end, um, it's something that I often think about myself as well, because, you know, sometimes we get too busy um, doing our ministry or with our family, looking after, and we forget that actually if we don't look after ourselves, how can we do the best for God in our ministry or in with our families or anything like that? So, you know, there is a sort of little bit about looking after ourselves too, which is really, really important. It all comes back to balance, isn't it? Absolutely. How yeah. how to be balanced. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, so Definitely. lifestyle factors. Let's have a look at some of these lifestyle factors. Oh, yeah, our new sure. System. Yeah, the other things um, that are innate that we're actually born with are um, tears. You know, so you get something in your eye um, that helps to get rid of it. Our skin is probably the largest innate organ that we've got. You know, it's a it's a huge um, part of our body, and it actually has this amazing ability to protect us. Um, it's got a microbiome, you know, of its own, and pretty incredible. Um, mucus, you know, that helps to um, bring up. Um, any bugs that might have got into our um, body. Also, stomach acid. You know, when we think of the one thing, you know, for an example, for stomach acid, um, you know, if you if you get H. pylori, it's often related to um, the fact that our stomach acid isn't strong enough. And so the H. pylori can take over and um, damage our health very badly. Yeah. And then, of course, as I spoke about the adaptive, you know, the developed, um, the developing immunity that that our body has this amazing ability if we give it time if we sleep if we um, take time out and rest it works really well so this is a list of the um, the lifestyle factors Renee that we were talking about you know so adequate sleep some physical activity whole foods such an important part of um, what we do in the end food is actually medicine so you know we think about it, it was food that was created for us food for us to um, use um, to eat you know one of the things I really like to focus on is eating seasonally because those foods that grow at those seasons are what we need for that time you know you think about winter foods we're coming up to winter aren't we and you you think of the onions and the root vegetables that have got this they're warming they're hearty but they also contain those nutrients that we need um, in the colder weather for winter you know summertime we have a lot more salads and light food um, you know so it's it's that sort of difference it makes and so eating seasonally is really really important um, the stress Absolutely. angle that we talked quickly about um, lots of water, you know, our body's made up of 70% water, such an important part of having a healthy um, body is having enough water. Um, Fibre for the microbiome, I've done that, even that's part of food, I've done that as a separate item because in a moment we'll talk about the microbiome, but you know, um, we have to feed that microbiome to be healthy, so we need to be choosing the foods that can help that microbiome to be like it should. Get some sun, um, you know, we're coming up to to winter where um, I live in Auckland and you know Auckland's well known for having three seasons in a day um, and for being a bit cloudy at times um, and so it's important when there's sun around to get that and we'll talk about that and and maybe I've put an item on there today as well Renee about supplements and I'm not necessarily meaning supplements as in tablets but I'm thinking of ways that um, you can supplement your diet with certain foods as well to make sure you're getting some of the things that are really important to help our immune system, especially I'm just specifically going to be talking much more about some of the ones that have been well researched in helping for COVID as well. Yep, excellent. So let's look at adequate sleep. Yes, so, um, you know, we all know we need sleep, um, but many of us don't get a good enough sleep or get long enough as well and um and you know I don't know about you Renee but when I was young um younger um I thought I could do all-nighters and um 
and be okay. Um, but actually, we know that sleep deprivation is very damaging to our body. And um, it's just really important that we get that seven to nine hours. You know, many of us can cope with seven hours. Some people will need nine. But, you know, we've got to get enough sleep because it's not just a time for um, making us feel not tired anymore. You know, so many processes happen while we sleep. Um, you know, when we're sleeping, um, our lymphatic system is doing a lot of work to help um, our immune system, to help clean the, um, it's this sort of like this wash that happens, The glim, it's called a glymphatics in the brain, and the brain just shrinks a little bit so that it can wash. You know, um, our digestive system has a major clean at night when we sleep as well. You know, all of these things, if we're not getting our sleep, those processes can't occur. You know, they're really, really important. So when it comes to our immune system, we know from studies that a good quality sleep actually does help us recover a lot quicker if we get sick. Um, sleep deprivation and too much stress can increase how much of the hormone cortisol is made. And when we increase too much of that, it actually suppresses our immune function as well. And also we know that, um, you know, there's certain hormones and chemicals and proteins that fight off infection, infections that are released while we sleep as well. So such an important part of being healthy is getting that seven to nine hours sleep. And most of us know how many we need, you know, and um, but it's important to make sure we get enough so that our body can actually do what it was created to do. It's quite interesting, really, that um, sleep is actually like a medicine. It's, it's healing the body at the same time, Absolutely. which we, we yeah. often just think um, that you go to sleep because you're tired. Um, mm -hmm. but, but, but there's actually things that are happening when we are sleeping that heal our body. So that's why it's important that we get enough sleep. Absolutely. And, and next okay. we've got, you know, keeping enough. Yeah. It's one of the ones, you know, we sometimes think in winter when it's getting cold, um, you know, I'm very good at using excuses of weather as to why I don't go out for a walk. Um, it's very easy to take that and sort of think, I, um, I'm not going to go out because I'm going to get wet. Um, but, you know, all year round we need to be active. We don't have to be going for a run if we don't want to. We don't have to be going to the gym. It's important to choose something that you enjoy doing. But we were created to be active, and it's really important that we continue that way. Um, being active when it comes to our immune system is important for circulation. Um, it also keeps the lymphatic system going. Our lymphatic system does, it just sits under the skin. You know, it's a system that is important for taking toxins out of the body. And it doesn't have a pump like our blood, um, you know, round for the heart um, to go around our body. The lymphatic system moves by movement. And that's why it's so important to be moving. And so, um, you know, taking time out to do some sort of activity is really important. You know, if you have to, there's some fantastic walking um, YouTubes that I get people to use. You know, they're, they're fun. They're, um, you can do them for 20 minutes inside. You don't have to go outside to go for a walk if you don't want to. But, you know, rug up on a beautiful day and get outside and take some time, you know, to spend 20 to 30 minutes regularly most days of the week to help your immune system to work more effectively. Absolutely. I heard that there's not bad weather, it's just bad clothing. <laughs> That's so, true. <laughs> so yeah. as long as you are dressed for the, the weather, just get out there and do it. Absolutely. Mm. Sounds good. <laughs> Eating well. So, you know, to me, I, of course, I'm a nutritionist, so it's the most important. Um, but it, it really is, you know, it's something that, as I said in the beginning, you know, food is medicine. Foods contain this array of amazing for want of a better word, chemicals. And you know, they have these phytochemicals or plant chemicals that give us so many um, nutrients. You know, we know the nutrients like protein and carbohydrates and fats and things, but there's all of these hundreds and hundreds of other phytochemicals that our body needs. And, you know, choose a rainbow when you eat. You know, look at the colours on your plate. Look at the um, 
textures look at you know some cook some raw but the colors are so important because each of those colors actually has different flavonoids in them and those flavonoids uh you know if you think about a plant um plants have a, a little bit like humans actually you know they have their tissue they have their they have a type of blood you know they've got the um liquids that go circulate round and round they've got cells on their um leaves and fruit um they have seeds they have um fruit that ripens and you know they're these amazing plants and when they get a little bit of damage or when they picked the wonderful thing is these secondary metabolites are activated in the plant an example i can think of is many of you will know this example of kawakawa that beautiful herb um new zealand herb that grows that's really has some wonderful health benefits for us um kawakawa you know we everybody just about that i talk to knows that um when you choose your kawakawa leaves to make your cup of tea or or use, um, you choose the ones with all the holes in um, because they're the more medicinal ones. And the reason they are is when the caterpillar ate those holes, the plants sort of thought, oh, no, I've got to go and make sure that my leaves don't get damaged. So all the secondary metabolites go to that leaf or the leaves to help them to heal and not get damaged anymore. And so they're the ones that are really medicinal. And that's what's just, isn't that amazing? That's what's incredible about the plant foods have yeah um so you know it's about limiting those highly processed foods um you know the processed foods we find in the center of the supermarket you know um it's about using more of those whole foods that have been grown and um created for us mm. and i just put a couple of notes on the slide as well renee because i thought it's really important to realize that sugar does affect our immune system um you know it affects it it affects the way that the white cells attach to the bacteria and it suppresses the immune system as quickly as 30 minutes after you've eaten it and can last up to five hours. You know, that's quite significant, isn't it, really? It um, is. And it's a good reason time. not to eat the sugar. So if we're trying to be as healthy as we can, have a really good immune system, it's reduce, or I always say, try to eat nothing out of a packet or a can for the best health. Mm -hmm. If we want optimal health, it's eat as simple and as healthy by having the plant-based whole food that God has given us. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's really good to target about 35, 30 to 35 different types of foods in a week to get. And by doing that variety, you know you're getting all of, because all of our foods contain different nutrients. They're not all, you know, you think about something like grains, you know, we have wheat, we've got corn, we've got barley, we've got rice, we've got, you know, but what happens is most, many of us um, just eat wheat only, but we've got all those other amazing grains. Um, you know, the same thing goes with our vegetables and fruits. You know, we might just eat apples, you know, in apple season, but, you know, look at all the different other fruits like the kiwi fruit and the fijoas, you know, choosing in different foods and variety is really important because that's how we also get a lot of those phytonutrients that are really important for us. Fabulous. So we're talking about food. So tell us yeah. what sorts of food are good for us to build up our immune system. So here's a bit of a list I thought I'd quickly put together. Um, and I'm sure there'd be more. But, you know, when you look at your vegetables, um, for me, garlic and onions are just up there for immunity. You know, they've got sulfur in them, which is fantastic. They have allium, things that are really, you know, phytonutrients that are really important to help our immune system. Dark green vegetables, you can't go past those, of course, you know, they come up everywhere. Shiitake and all of the mushrooms, you know, and, um, you know, mushrooms are making a bit of a comeback in the area of um, food as medicine. Um, and, you know, shiitake um, in research for supercharging the immune system, the research is just amazing. Um, one of the other ones I love and I'm using a lot at the moment is one called lion's mane. And lion's mane, um, not only for the immune system, but it's a neurotropic, which is for the brain. And it helps with concentration and with focus. It's incredible. You know, so these foods were all created for us and they do all of these things. Celery, kumra, carrots, you know, we need orange, some other colors. Um, cauliflower, tomatoes, beetroot, salad greens, 
bean sprouts, pumpkin and leeks, all the vegetables, you know, and there will be more. I was just choosing some that are in the research have been, um, have come up as being having phytonutrient ingredients that are really beneficial. You know, the berries, anything with berry on on the end, you know, um, you know you're going to be getting bioflavonoids everywhere. You know, they're fantastic. So really think of those berries, even frozen berries. You know, we when you think of blueberries, there's still a few in um, chip containers around, but, you know, they're getting quite expensive. Um, and so, you know, having frozen berries, blueberries especially, you're still going to get those amazing flavonoids because they've been um, snap frozen. So they haven't been sitting around. In fact, it, in all honesty, they're probably better at the moment than buying the fresh ones at the supermarket because, because of the price, I think they're sitting there a bit longer. So the frozen ones have been pretty well frozen straight away. Lemons and limes, you know, our citrus fruit, lots of vitamin C. Um, and, you know, you th I add lemon to everything I eat just about, you know, lemon rind, lemon juice. I think it's a great way, you know, it's uplifting as well. You know, you squeeze a lemon or um, grate a lemon rind, you get the, um, the essential oils already go into your head. They go through the nose into the olfactory straight away. And lemons are known to be really uplifting as well. So not only are you helping your immune system with your vitamin C, you're also helping that side as well. Kiwi fruit, oranges, apples, pomegranates, one of the fantastic ones, you know, and we're using it a lot more in herbal medicine, pomegranate, because it's a wonderful antimicrobial, which means that it's great for bacteria and for viruses just so you know. Mm. Um, pumpkin seeds, Brazil nuts, almonds, and sunflower seeds, you know, our, and there are other seeds as well, um, but, you know, pumpkin seeds, these these ones I've mentioned today, the reason I've chosen these ones is they all have wonderful, so and walnuts I should have added there, I've just clicked and looked, but, you know, they all have wonderful sources of um, zinc, which is really important for the immune system, mm -hmm. um, but also good fat. You know, and for our cell integrity, we need fat. We need good fats. And that's what these will supply us with. And then the herbs, you know, I've chosen just a few, but um, actually most of the herbs will, are very beneficial. Um, but, you know, turmeric's a wonderful anti-inflammatory, which, you know, we the re, one of the reasons um, we get sick is because of inflammation. You know, inflammation tells us that there's a problem going on, but when we ignore that problem and um, the inflammation doesn't go away because we're using that arm that we injured or, um, you know, even unfortunately, you know, I'm speaking for myself here, but unfortunately when you put weight on as well, we have a lot more inflammation as well. You know, so it's really important to watch the inflammation. Well, turmeric is amazing for that. You know, of course, ginger, we know for our immunity, chili, basil, sorry, there's some noisy cars there, no, I'm sorry about that. Um, parsley for iron, for vitamin C, you know, all of these things are things that were created for us to use to help our body um, build and keep our immune systems really healthy and well. I'm so pleased that you've added that list of herbs in there. And I know that the list of herbs is very extensive and you've just, you know, put some on there. And I'd love mm. to get you back at another time, Kim, to talk about herbs and weeds because this is one of your other big passions and it's one of my big passions. So oh, I'd love to get you back and, and let's talk about this in some more detail. So if viewers, if you have any questions about herbs and, and weeds and how you can use them to to better your health, send those questions mm. into hubchatquestions at gmail.com and we'll get Kim back on here and let's have a good discussion about that. Most of us live in a really fast-paced lifestyle. Uh, we work in, we've got school, we've got sport, we've got hobbies. It, it's really hard to keep and gain balance. How can we do this? What can we do? Well, it is a really hard one, Renee. And, and you know, we know that having long-lasting stress really affects our immune system. Um, our body is in fight and flight. And the processes that help our immune system to work properly aren't able to carry on because of that um, fight and flight constantly happening. So it, it, 
I, it's a really difficult one, actually. And I think for me, um, the tools I tend to use or advise people to use are things like positive thinking. You know, we, um, and by doing, by that, I mean writing a gratitude journal. You know, the research shows us that people's lives change just by writing in a journal every night. Only a paragraph or not even that, but, you know, um, I keep a journal and I love to write. Um, I actually write 10 things now. I started off only doing three things that I was grateful for. Um, that was because I um, run DART programs, and that's one of the things we do with our, our um, DART participants. Um, it's so good for our, our mind. But also, um, at the end of that, I actually also write three people um, that I want that I've that have popped into my mind that I want to pray for that day as well. And there's it actually just starts my day off really well. So, you know, a gratitude journal of some type has some amazing benefits for our bodies and brain. And um, I would definitely look at that. It's sort of um, the other thing we tend to do when we're in stress is, is we're not kind of staying present. We're often thinking way up there, you know, of of all of the things that we've got to do and um, what we haven't done and um, what we've missed. And, you know, there's all of these things going on in our minds and we're not kind of present in the moment. So we're not even aware of what we're doing. So our body is reacting in a very fight and flight way because we're just a little bit, um, you know, I, one of the examples I often use, Renee, is a, a car, um set of keys, you know, for your car, you know, when you're in a rush, you often put them down on somewhere. And to think about when you go to get them again, you know, to think about where they are, it's such a struggle. And, you know, our brain's amazing. And it actually can tell you where they are, if you give yourself time. But if you've just plonked them down and not even looked at your keys when you put them down or not thought about, I'm putting my keys down, um, then it can't because it hasn't got eyes. So it can't see that you've put them down. Does that make sense? Mm, absolutely so, I love yeah. that idea of a gratitude journal yeah. I think we we're so busy and we ask for so much but we forget mm. to actually be thankful for things um so I, I love that idea encourage our viewers to get mm. out a, a little journal and to just you know just write two or three things down each day yeah also the other um thing is I've got their positive thinking and you know that's come from DARP as well because you know one of the things we have to do for um two weeks and actually that comes also from um the Livermore project as well which Darren Morton ran but um you know one of the things we have to do for a few weeks is not say anything negative it's surprisingly hard <laughs> so, um but you know it, it makes you aware of how many negative things you are saying does, you know, and so it's one of the things to, that we've found can really help with stress and deep breathing. You know, that's I find, um, you know, we can actually help our system very well in stress by changing the way that we breathe. When we're in stress, we breathe very or anxious, we breathe very shallowly from the, you know, up our shoulders, actually, most of us when we do that. And a lot of us blow, um, breathe through our mouth instead of our nose as well. And so one of the things I like to do is train people to breathe from their stomach and to breathe through their nose and out through their nose and to sort of hold it a little bit so that so that they're getting that ability to slow things down a little bit. It's really, really beneficial. And I was actually listening to a podcast this week and um, they were talking about, they had a guy from Ireland talking about breathe, deep breathing. And he was saying that it actually, um, because if you breathe through your nose, because of, remember I said about the innate um, immune system and we've got all the hairs in our nose and everything, the, um, that actually activates um, one of the hormones to do with immunity. If we, you know, And so breathing through our nose actually not only helps our fight and flight um, and stress and anxiety, but also helps our immunity as well. Mm. So that's pretty amazing. It's amazing. Such easy things that we forget um, can be so beneficial for us. Can't they? Absolutely. Just, just great. So let's talk about water because that's one thing yes. that we forget to drink enough of. Um, yes. And then we wonder why we're uh, dehydrated, tired, headaches, our body's not functioning mm -hmm. properly because often we're just not drinking enough water, are we? Absolutely. And, you know, we don't, if we're thirsty, it's, we're already dehydrated. So, you know, it's, 
yeah, we need to get going and drink that water. Um, you know, for many of us, um, you know, fortunately, I like the taste of water. And, you know, I don't mind that it's got no taste. Um, and for me, it, because I know how well it works for my brain, how, you know, it stops me feeling tired, like you said, um, but also helps that lymphatic, lymphatic system to work properly and move things around our body like it should. And that lymphatic system is what's flushing and taking out the toxins that um, overnight the um, B lymphs have done some damage to. You know, it's um, the sort of the white blood cells of hopefully manage to catch the bacteria and viruses and other damaged cells. And so the lymphatic system is what takes that out. And it's really, really important. Um, dehydration reduces, this is one of the things I just mentioned a few minutes ago too, about the deep breathing and that protective barrier in your nose. Dehydration reduces the function of that protective barrier in your nose, which is actually one of the first lines of defense defense against a cold as well. So that's another reason why it's really important not to be dehydrated. But, you know, think of your skin as well. You know, if it's dry, um, it, you know, you know, like what I often do is do this. Um, and if it doesn't go down very quickly, then we know we're a little bit dehydrated and it's important to get some water in. How much water you need is, is around about um, between um, point. Uh, well, you know, if you were, say, say if you were 100 kgs, I'm just doing this for easy math, um, then you're going to need about three and a half litres of water. So you're sort of needing um, per kilogram of body weight, you're needing about 35 mils of water. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Yes, at the beginning, if you haven't been drinking it, it might make you go to the toilet a little bit more often, but your body will settle down and it will come right. Um, I find if someone is struggling to be in a routine for drinking water. Um, a good way to do it is, you know, when you first get up in the morning, have um, a couple of cupfuls then. You know, have some in mid-morning, have some before breakfast, have some mid-morning, have some um, mid-afternoon, have some at night, you know. So sort of divide it over your day so you remember to have it. Get into a routine, into a habit, yeah. Now, there's so much talk about sunshine, especially at the moment with vitamin D. Um, now, for so long, we've been told that sunshine isn't very good for us and we need to slip, slip, slip. Now, I, I find it quite interesting that we've been saying now we need to supplement the vitamin D. Talk to us about sunshine. Yeah. And, it's you know, sun helps us with our vitamin D. It's actually, um, you know, it's synthesized from the sunshine hitting our skin. It's a fat soluble vitamin. Um, you know, the important thing I think, you know, when it comes to sunshine is being careful not to go out in the times of the day when you are going to get burnt. You know, we live in a part of the world where um, we do get burnt more than if you lived in North America or UK. Um, so it's important to be aware of that. But yes, research is actually showing us that the putting on of um, sunscreens and the wearing of sunglasses is actually causing us to make less vitamin D. So that's really interesting, isn't it? Um, so it's good for us to get outside um, 20 minutes. Um, it, it's To be honest, Renee, it's one of those really hard ones because um, you need to be not have too many clothes on, which which is why it's really difficult, you know. Um, if you work in the garden a lot, um, then it's going to be a lot easier. Um, but if you're in an office, it is quite difficult to get enough sun. Um, I, I tend to like people to get out in the sun in the morning if they can. And we've moved to a time in the year where um, in another month, um, most of us will be leaving home in the dark and going to work and coming home in the dark. So um, we're entering this, um, the sad time, which is a seasonal affective disorder time. Um, but if we can, getting into that sun and spending some time in the early morning with the sun in your eyes activates the production of serotonin. Serotonin is activated when the light hits our retina, um, the hormone in there um, actually does that, and in an enzyme as well. Um, and that becomes the precursor to having enough melatonin 12 hours later um, to start making you feel a bit tired so you can go to bed. So if you're struggling to get to bed, think about getting in that early morning sun and light 
rather than sun, I'm calling it light, sorry, you're wanting about um, 10,000 lux of light in the morning to help you um, with your sleep. But I did skip a bit about the sun. So what they're finding in research is that um, many, many people are deficient in vitamin D because we just don't live that lifestyle any longer where we're outside all of the, a lot of the time. Does that make sense? Absolutely, because um, so most of the time we're inside, aren't we? We work inside, we study inside, we do our sports inside, yeah. and then we wonder why we are deficient in, in vitamin D. Yeah, absolutely. So it would probably be um, top on my list of, um, you know, if I, if I was going to take a supplement, um, and I currently do at the moment, um, you know, because we're in a clinic where, where a lot of people come in, and so I do take one just to make sure that my immune system is going to be a little bit stronger. Um, but, you know, I don't take it all year. It's just because we're heading into winter, I'm kind of um, managing it a little bit at the moment. Um, but it's about if you can get in the sun, if you've got the opportunity to get in the sun, use it that way. Spend about 20 minutes um, with your shoulders and you don't want long sleeves. Um, you know, you want your shoulders and arms to be getting the sunlight on them so that it can start that activation and synthesizing of vitamin D. Hmm. Now we've talked a bit about food um, and we, I just want to come back to this again about gut health because our gut health has a huge impact on our overall health. And I find this quite amazing that what we eat, we are what we eat. Now this is a very old saying, but it's actually true. We are what we eat. Why is this, Kim? <laughs> well, you know, we've got trillions of cells in our body, but we've got even more micro of bugs, you know, so, and that's what our microbiome is, and um, and it's actually what keeps us healthy, even though I just called it bugs, it's what keeps us healthy. 70% um, of the cells that make up our immune system are actually found in the gut, so that's why it's really important to have our gut healthy. Not only that, um, some of our neurotransmitters um, the ingredients for those, they're produced in the gut as well. So, you know, if your gut's not working like it should be, then a lot of systems in the body aren't going to be either. Um, you know, the saying, um, it's just slipped from my head, but about, you know, your gut being the second brain or all disease starting in the gut has a lot of relevance we know today after all the research that's gone on about the microbiome and how it works so um we need to feed that gut microbiome you know you can get probiotics but probiotics are short term they're not going to help your microbiome grow it's what you eat that's going to help your microbiome grow and be healthy so you know, eating lots of things with really good fibers and that's why you need variety as well because you know we it's Yes, if we just ate lettuce, we'd get um, some microbiome fed, but we've got so many different varieties of bacteria, good bacteria in our gut. They all need food to help them keep going. You know, one of the great foods that I encourage people to have is apples, actually. Apples are full of amazing prebiotics prebiotics for feeding that microbiome but all of our vegetables are and um, you know an example I can use is if you think of something like beans and legumes they're just wonderful actually on the side note they're the most amazing food for our microbiome to keep it healthy um, but you know some people if they haven't had something like maybe black beans before um, they will get a little bit of um wind you know they might feel a bit uncomfortable um for a while and the next time they eat it they might feel uncomfortable as well and then after a while then their microbiome will have developed the ability to recognize and use you know they'll help to grow the bacteria that is going to be more able to break down um that fiber that's found on the black beans so you know that's what makes it amazing and how our microbiome works so it's really important to feed our gut microbiome um, it's important to have a wide selection of fiber because that's where the food for our microbiome is. Um, but to also have probiotic foods if you want to. Um, you know, if your microbiome's growing really well, I don't worry about it so much. But if if you've got some gut problems going on, then some probiotic foods like sauerkraut or um, sourdough breads, you know, things like that can be really beneficial as well. Um, you know, we know that 
when our bad bacteria outweigh our good bacteria, that our system, our immune system definitely becomes weakened. So if we're not eating enough of these wonderful plant foods to help our good bacteria to thrive, then our bad, the bacteria that we don't really want, it lives very symbiotically with both, but we need our good bacteria to be thriving and holding the other bacteria at bay because we still need some of those other bacteria for other purposes, but we just don't want them overtaking the good bacteria. Mm. Um, our microbiome actually trains our immune system. It communicates with the cells um, about what's going on as well in the gut. And so, you know, it's just really important that we have a healthy gut. Yeah. Yeah. I love that point. And it keeps coming back to God's given us the right diet. God's given us everything we need. Um, so let's go and just learn about it, uh, know about it so we can have the best health. Excellent. So let's let's talk about some, just as we're starting to finish up here, let's talk about some really good natural ways that we can yeah. keep ourselves healthy. Now, I know that quercetin uh, and these things are in NAC, we can go and get a tablet, sure, but actually mm -hmm. we can make this stuff or it's in vegetables and fruit and grains and things like that and, and herbs if we know where to look. Can you, can you run Absolutely. us through this? Talk yeah, this. so I've just got a few examples here today. Um, vitamin D, of course, you know, and uh, there may be the case where you need to take it to help your immune system. Um, and the research actually throughout this last two years, um, the hospital research plus other research run in universities has actually shown that if you've got a really good vitamin D level in your body, your chance of ending up in hospital with um, with the virus is a lot less. So it's a good one to know about. One I love is nigella. You know, um, nigella is this beautiful plant. It's um, sometimes called black cumin. Um, it's, oh, I think, I'm trying, you know, I get used to the botanical names, but I think it's love in the mist is if you've got, a lovely garden with lots of flowers in it. That's the plant I'm talking about, nigella. And um, some research actually show you can get nigella oil that you can use, but you can buy nigella seeds just in the herb section, you know, the dried herb section of the supermarket. Um, and one teaspoon ground daily and added to your breakfast in the morning will actually help with... Um, it's been shown to help with uh, assisting with um, breathe, better breathing, but also helping to help you get through and um, change the symptoms, I guess. You know, so that not heal, but help with that journey that you're having. So the research is very strong on that. And um, I love that it's, you know, just something simple like nigella seed. How amazing. That is amazing. Um, and another good place to yeah. find it is if you're struggling to find it in the supermarket, um, mm. your local Indian shop will have it as well. And so yes. that's where I get it from. Yeah. And actually, I get mine at Benin. So if you've got Benins in the areas where you live, um, they have a really good source of it as well. So, yeah. Um, NAC, um, I've added this one in because... Um, you know, if you've got respiratory effects from having um, had maybe the virus, then NAC can be actually really good at reducing the severity of the symptoms. Doesn't prevent, but reduce the severity. Um, quercetin, you know, I talked a bit about um, bioflavonoids, didn't I? You know, about the amazing array, <clears throat> excuse me, of different bioflavonoids that are in our foods. And one of the ones, quercetin, actually found an amazing lot of plants so many plants actually I've just mentioned onions parsley grapes broccoli but there's lots of grains that have it there are lots of fruits that have it um, I just chose those ones today because they're ones that are around at the moment and um, it was going to take over my whole page if I added them all on um, but you know quercetin or flavonoids are very important bioflavonoids are very important for helping our immune system to work more effectively in um, creating the cells that will help to fight the, um, the bug or the virus or the bacteria when it comes so so important 
And the other one I thought of that comes up a lot and I, we get asked a lot about in our clinic is zinc. And, um, you know, zinc is very important for healing. Um, it's very important for our immune system, for helping the immune cells to work properly. It's important, you know, you think of someone, you know, they've maybe got um, a cut that's not healing. You know, it's usually something like zinc um, that will help with that. And so zinc, definitely. But, you know, think of it from food as well. Don't just think of going, rushing out and buying some supplements. Um, I didn't put vitamin C. That's another one, you know, taking vitamin C is really important. But, you know, think of the foods that vitamin C, and at the moment, Renee already mentioned earlier about the feijoas and kiwi fruit, right in season at the moment. And full, sorry, <laughs> we're on the main road and so it's quite noisy at times, and full of vitamin C. So, so important for our immune system. Um, and great um, fiber for microbiome feeding as well. Um, but we've got pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds. Zinc is one of the ones, that's the reason I decided to talk about it. It's one of the ones that's a little bit harder to get, especially on a plant-based diet, but pumpkin seeds are very high in it. Um, and so, you know, even having, um, you know, a handful of pumpkin seeds on your salad or um, in your soup, or on your sandwich, you know, to try and add some naturally found zinc. You'll also get some magnesium and you'll also get um, some other really important nutrients as well. But, you know, having a food source of it is, as well um, is really, really important. Fabulous. Kim, it has been just so informative having you on a Hub Chat Health today. And I really hope that you're going to come back on really soon and talk to us about herbs and weeds, because I know that you have a wealth of knowledge in this area. To our viewers at home, stay healthy and well. And Kim, I'm just wondering, to finish off our session today, would you pray for us? Sure. Thank you so much. Dear Father, thank you for the amazing bodies that you created. You know, we've done, um, at times, we don't look after them as we should, but we know that you created the ability for our body to heal itself if we just give it the chance. Lord, thank you for the foods and for the um, ability, the wonderful way that we can just walk outside in nature and enjoy the blue and green. We know that when you created us, you created us to be healthy and whole. And Lord, we thank you for the knowledge that we're gaining over time to be able to actually make sure and ensure that our immune system can be healthy so that we can help to fight any of um, the diseases that are really coming into our world at the moment, Father. And so thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your love and your wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been great having you tune in today for Hub Chat Health. Take care and we'll see you again soon.